Talking, 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 happy talk. Talk about things you'd like to do. You've got to have a dream. If you don't have a dream, how are you going to have a dream come true? Before we get started on today's video, I want to talk you through my little uh, wall of dream dreams. This is like, in an ideal world, 10, 20 years down the line, these are the events I'd love to be shooting. First of all, we've got Super Bowl. I just think entertainment-wise, that'd be absolutely stunning. Along with WrestleMania, which again, entertainment-wise, visuals-wise, brilliant. And uh, I'm a huge wrestling fan anyway, so yeah, that'd be great. Next up, we got the uh, T20 final day that happens down at Edgebaston, down the road from me, uh, quite often. So yeah, that'd be really good. Or the Ashes. Next up, of course, FA Cup final. Champions League final. The beauty of the Augusta Masters. And the ultimate, the World Cup final. And quite a relevant quote to that is, I don't chase dreams, I hunt goals. Or all those titles. Okay, welcome along to the latest episode of this vlog. Carl W. Newton here of Champix. Before we go any further, please like this video, subscribe to it, pass the bell, press the bell, please. It helps me no end. I'm trying to grow the channel in 2021. Going to keep putting out awesome content, so it would be appreciated if I could get a subscribe and a like from you if you're not already. Okay, so today's video I want to talk through um, some tips and advice from stuff I've learned and been told so far. So, yeah, basically, it's going to work, there's going to be a few. It's going to start with sort of before your event, during your event and after your event. So before the event, first things first, if you want to get into sports photography, study the greats. Um, so you can either do that by going onto Google Images and typing in something like greatest ever sports photos or you could use the University of YouTube there's uh, loads of content out there um, from guys in America, guys from uh, Nikon, Canon Ambassadors, Sony Ambassadors um, Sports Illustrated, I think the best channels that I used when I was first learning were Mark Curtin and Rob Sambles and obviously I've started putting out some videos as well what you'll find in the description to this video is a link to a little YouTube playlist of a few videos to get you started and then you can kind of explore from there so yeah um, that would be my first bit of advice and then before an actual event um, assuming you use photo mechanic which is pretty much an industry standard for sports photographers piece of software called photo mechanic before your event Use Photo Mechanic to set up your metadata on a template and also get all your code replacements in place. Again, this is something you can learn about on YouTube. It's Once you know how, it's relatively straightforward. So get all your metadata, get all your code replacements set up and then you're good to go pitch side or in terms of turning things around fast, straight after an event, after full time. Okay, so we're getting towards event day now be early okay I normally aim to get if it's a 3 o'clock kick off on a Saturday I'll normally be there no later than 1 o'clock and that is so I've got a chance especially if it's an away game not so bad if it's a home game but if it's an away game to kind of work out where I'm going to position myself um, that includes backgrounds so for example when I was at Mosley Cricket I was shooting towards the wicket with a car park and port in the background. So I changed my side and some of these non-league grounds where you'll probably start football shooting, 
you know, you can have all sorts of backgrounds, like, you know, tower blocks and all sorts. So, you know, have that bit of time to walk around the pitch and kind of work out your backgrounds and your positionings and where you want to be. That will help you no end. Other things you can do when you get there early that I'd say are vital is check out any challenges you might have um, and see how you can overcome them. Set up remote cameras as well is the other advantage of being there early. Um, you've got time to do all that stuff. Um, you want to tell the story of the day and that doesn't just mean the action on the pitch. That could mean stuff going on in and around the club you're at. Um, you know, moments on the pitch by mascots and corporates and if, if clubs do, and they don't really tend to do it lower down the league, but at my club, Birmingham City, they do like a half-time, when the fans were in and when the fans will be in again, like a half-time challenge, like, a, you know, hit the crossbar from 30 yards out and silly stuff like that. So you can get a few silly photos doing that. Um you might be able to get photos of TV, cut the highs up, you go TV commentators arriving. Um, and the fans, the fans in themselves are brilliant. You know, get these fans coming through the turnstiles, grabbing a bottle, grabbing a drink, having a bit of, you know, light-hearted fun before kick-off, all that sort of stuff. It makes some great photos. It's not just about your action on the pitch for me. Next bit of advice, warm-ups. When the players come out to do their warm-up, that is also your warm-up. By that I mean, first and foremost, you can use that time to get your camera settings right for kick-off. So get in there, get some photos of them doing running drills and all sorts and quick little ball games and use that to get your settings right. So warm-up for you as well as the players, make sure everything's alright, everything's working and that when the kick-off happens, you're good to go. And also, you can get some nice, uh, kind of candid, at ease photos during the warm ups. You know, lads having banter, having light hearted chat that you ain't going to get during the game because it'll be serious game face. So, warm ups are, are a must, really, for me. During the game, during getting your photos, you're looking for emotions and celebrations and a photo with a bit of narrative, dejection, all that kind of stuff. There's no point taking a photo of a man stood with a football at his foot for no reason. You want him to be in action, pinging it somewhere. You want to have a bit of context to it. Um, you know, goal celebrations are great if you can get a wide enough frame because you, if it's if it's close in action, you'll often have maybe on the one side of your frame the player celebrating and on the other side of the frame, sort of head in hands and disagreeing with each other and all that sort of thing that happens when a team letting a goal they can be fantastic frames from experience lock as you go so there's a there's a thing called chimping and a lot of sports uh, photographers that advise against it which basically means to be checking your images as you go now for me this can be a good thing because on on the nikon and i know canon systems do similar you can go through your images and you can lock an image there's often like a key symbol on the back of your camera and you can lock an image that means you're protecting it from being deleted but the main point is later on when you put your SD card into photo mechanic you can select import only locked images which means basically you can quickly flip through the photos pitch side and think yeah that's a keeper that's a keeper I can work with that that's good and you can lock them and then you're only importing them in, you're not getting any duff ones imported in, you're not getting any out of focus ones or whatever. You're just getting the ones that you know look good enough to work with. That will speed things up two or threefold when you get in front of the computer, trust me. So lock as you go. Good chimping. Next one, don't leave the pitch until after the players have left the pitch. Often, you know, you might get moments where You'll find the referees will wait in the centre circle, but if there's been a dubious decision, the players will go up to him and have a chat, or the manager will have a chat, or there might be two players that have had a Barney on the pitch and they have a little bit of a Barney leaving the pitch at full time or half time. Always stay on the pitch longer than the players, you'll always get something. There was a game I did, Redditch Street Biggles Wade, and they won at home, massive 4 1. I think it was the second home game of the season, first win of the season, uh, maybe second win of the season. 
and I stayed on the pitch. I, I followed this model. I stayed on the pitch till after the players have, and they ended up doing like um, not a full lap of honour, but they went to the home fans' ends and they were like celebrating and clapping the fans and all sorts for a good few minutes. And by staying on the pitch, I was able to get that. So, yeah, always stay on the pitch longer than players. Editing wise, five golden rules that I live by. Always make sure your horizon's straight. No wonking, no nothing. Always straighten your horizon. Number two, you always want faces in the photos. You don't want the back of heads. You want your faces where possible. There might be times where context allows for the back of a shirt. Maybe a club have made a new signing and, and for the commercial values you want to get the name on the back of the shirt or something like that. I don't know, but... Nine times out of ten you want faces in photos. Same with the ball or the puck or whatever's being used for that sport. You want the ball in the photo, otherwise it's just an average person standing there. There might again there might be occasions where it works without the ball, but more often than not you want your ball in the photo. Number four, tight crop. A lot of the time, unless it's in context, maybe it's you know one of those goal celebrations where a team's dejected on the one side and the team celebrating on the other. More often than not, you want to crop in as tightly as you can to the action. So in football, for example, um, you have maybe an attacking player crossing the ball and the ball's just leaving his foot and a, a defending player's going in for the tackle. Crop to just them two. But when I say crop tight, don't go amputating anybody. Don't lose limbs. You want your full limbs in there. Um, the only time that might not be applicable is, is if you're cropping in tight enough and you can go above the waist but I wouldn't want to see anything below the waist in that case I wouldn't want him to have you know half and lower half I, I want it nice and clean so keep your full limbs in there um, where possible and number five make sure they're in focus key rule you know, if you start approaching agencies and they start approaching the press, any shots that aren't in focus or have certainly got a pivotal part of the photo, I know like night games you'll shoot on a 2.8 f-stop. Make sure at least the play, the player you, you're shooting, say you, I'm shooting Redditch, make sure the Redditch player is in focus. The rest of the frame, okay, that can fall by the wayside, but you want your Redditch player and preferably the ball as well. Pin sharp, focus. And on that note, last bit of advice I'll give you. Only share or upload your very best shots. Less is more, quantity over quality. Okay, thanks for watching today. There'll be another video out next week. Please like this video, comment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, all that jazz. Thanks for watching. Remember in the description there's a playlist of some sports photography videos. And a link to my Kofi page to make a donation to my cause. Meanwhile, thank you. Stay blessed. Stay safe. Stay home.